the bionic eye would produce an image like this. As you can see, the image that's presented is by no means perfect, but it does allow a degree of independence, so it will, in the end, be able to restore some form of vision to tens of thousands of people in Australia, millions of people throughout the world, so it's a very exciting device. This is our prototype bionic eye. It consists of two cameras that capture an image. They're mounted on these glasses. The image is sent to our processing unit that processes the image and converts it into a series of stimulation commands that are sent to a transmitter that is mounted here behind the ear. So that sends these, these commands wirelessly to the implanted device. Then the signals come to an implant which is placed on top of the eye with a small incision made in the side of the eye so that we can slide an, an electrode array around to the back of the retina. Now the back of the retina is roughly there and that's where our electrode array sits and it uh, receives these instructions from, from Nigel's system and that causes a signal to go down the optic nerve and be interpreted as vision by the patient. 15 years in the making to get to this point and it's been a very long journey. So here is our current generation of chip. Yeah, this will be a, a very exciting development once it gets to humans. We thought that we would be in human implantation about the year 2000, uh, which is a, sort of a naive view. Uh, so here we are in 2012 and we're anticipating actual human trials in 2013. So we started out using equipment that we, we scrounged from various disused pieces of electronics. So it was a very agricultural setup that we started with to make our, our electrodes. That's right. A lot of the work in the early days was done in my garage up on the central coast. Um, I had to carry this on the train and got lots of stairs and, and odd looks. This particular device allowed us to make a sphere that would allow us to put it very close to the neurons and directly electrically stimulate those things. I could show you the, the car coil, uh, the, the ignition coil from my wife's uh, 1978 Datsun uh, that I've she, she noticed it was missing pretty, pretty quickly, but uh, nevertheless, we were able to make this, this device based on that. In our first version of this thing, the Spark was so, uh, had so much energy in it that uh, the computers nearby would be reset and the people would uh, have to restart what they were doing. Uh, so I wasn't real popular. While Greg was doing all the hard work, I was racing around trying to find some money to resource the project. It was a very difficult task at that time. So that's why we have devices such as, as this, where we had to make things from, you know, uh, Datsuns and uh, stereo equipment and old televisions and things. So I was working at a bench trying to figure out what these were and writing down the values of, of what I was discovering. And I got this important call and I had to take this, this number down, lent over to the nearest bit of paper, which happened to be Greg's you know, beautiful circuit diagram, and I ripped the corner off it. <laughs> and uh, yes, Sorry. Greg wasn't happy at the time. <laughs> Shocked, I guess. <laughs> Since then we now have a million dollar laser that allows us to, to make our electrodes with exquisite quality and precision. So the progress that we've made is, over the last 10 years has been absolutely astounding. This is the latest chip that we have that's at the heart of the implant. So this, this particular device does 14 channels of electrical stimulation simultaneously. Uh, so what we were able to do with this device is, is repaint the picture to the patient much faster than we could before. So over in the corners of this, uh, we put our family members on there, our children and our wives. It was put on there initially for good luck, and uh, the first chip that we designed here worked, second chip that we designed here worked, third chip that we designed here worked, and they all have the names of the, the designers in the upper and lower left corners. We never thought that this would be quite the journey it's been. It's taken us 15 years, so it has been a slog, um, but along the way we've forged some amazing partnerships, we've, we've created some um, brilliant technology, state-of-the-art technology. And I guess what keeps us going with this research is that we know that it, the end point is someone that uh, really can't see anything, is that you're going to be able to see something with this device and uh, that is going to be a wonderful reward and it gets us motivated every day to, to, to do this right. You know, 15 years has just flown. I mean, my hair might have fallen out, but my enthusiasm hasn't waned. <laughs>